ever wondered what a concussion is? Well, let's dive right in and uncover the mystery behind this commonly used term. A concussion in the simplest terms is a type of traumatic brain injury. It's not a bruise or a bump on the brain, but something a bit more complex. Imagine your brain as a soft, squishy material floating inside a hard, protective shell, your skull. Now, what happens when that brain gets a jolt or a shake? That's when a concussion can occur. This could be from a blow to the head, a fall, a violent shake, or any other injury that moves the brain violently within the skull. But here's the tricky part. Unlike a cut or a broken bone, a concussion isn't something you can see with the naked eye. You can't just look in the mirror and say, oh, I have a concussion. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes the symptoms don't even show up immediately, and when they do, they can be subtle and often confused with other conditions. And yet even though you can't see it, a concussion can have serious effects. It can alter the way your brain functions, causing issues with memory, concentration, coordination and balance. In some cases, it can even affect your mood, leading to feelings of depression or anxiety. To make matters more complex, every concussion is unique. The same blow might cause a mild concussion in one person and a severe one in another. This is due to various factors such as the force of the impact, the angle of the blow, the health of the person at the time of the injury, and many other elements. In short, a concussion is a brain injury that's not visible but can affect your life in significant ways. It's something to be taken seriously, and not just shrugged off as getting your bell rung or seeing stars. It's an injury to your brain, the command center of your body. So that's what a concussion is. But how do you know if you've got one? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the signs and symptoms of concussions in the next scene. Recognizing a concussion is the first step towards recovery. Now let's delve into the signs and symptoms of concussions to help you understand this medical condition better. Firstly, a concussion might give rise to headaches that don't seem to dissipate. You might feel a persistent throb in your head, a sensation that is not just annoying but also quite concerning. Secondly, confusion is another common symptom. You might find yourself unable to recall recent events or feeling disoriented, like you're lost in a familiar place. This symptom often accompanies a feeling of dizziness, yet another red flag that shouldn't be ignored. Another sign to look out for is a lack of coordination. You might stumble while walking or struggle to perform tasks that require precision, such as tying your shoelaces or threading a needle. This symptom is particularly concerning because it can affect your ability to carry out everyday activities. Memory loss is another symptom that might indicate a concussion. You might forget information that you knew perfectly well before, like your best friend's name or your favorite song. This can be quite scary, but it's important to remember that it's a sign of the concussion, not a reflection of your cognitive abilities. Nausea and vomiting can also occur after a concussion. This is because the brain regulates the digestive system, and a concussion can disrupt this regulation. You might feel queasy, or you might actually vomit. If you're experiencing these symptoms, it's crucial to stay hydrated and seek medical attention. Next, you might experience a ringing in your ears, a symptom known as tinnitus. This can be particularly bothersome in quiet environments, and it can also impact your ability to concentrate. Sleepiness and excessive fatigue are other symptoms to look out for. You might feel overwhelmingly tired, even after a good night's sleep. Or you might find yourself falling asleep at odd times, like in the middle of a conversation or while watching TV. Now, while we've covered a wide range of symptoms, it's important to remember that not everyone will experience all of these symptoms. Each person's experience with a concussion is unique, and the symptoms can vary widely. Plus, it's crucial to note that these symptoms might not be immediate. They could take hours or even days to manifest after the injury. So, if you've had a head injury and you're feeling fine, don't assume you're in the clear. Keep an eye out for these symptoms in the following days. In conclusion, a concussion is a serious injury that requires immediate medical attention. If you or someone you know is showing any of these symptoms after a head injury, don't hesitate to seek help. It's better to be safe than sorry after all. Remember, these symptoms might not be immediate and could take hours or days to manifest. Now that we know the signs, let's explore what usually causes a concussion. Concussions are typically caused by a blow to the head that makes the brain move around inside the skull. This can be triggered by a variety of incidents. Sports injuries, for instance, are a common cause. Contact sports like football, hockey and soccer often involve high-speed collisions which can lead to concussions. 
even non-contact sports like gymnastics or swimming, can result in a concussion if an athlete takes a tumble or hits their head. Car and bicycle accidents are also frequent culprits. The sudden stop or change in direction during a crash can cause the brain to be jostled inside the skull, leading to a concussion. Remember, wearing a seatbelt or a helmet can reduce the risk, but it won't necessarily prevent a concussion from happening. Falls, particularly among older adults and young children, can result in concussions as well. A trip on a staircase, a slip in the bathroom, or a fall off a bike can all be enough to cause a concussion. It's not just the high falls that can lead to concussions. Even a short tumble can have serious consequences. And let's not forget fights. Physical altercations, whether they're in the schoolyard, on the street, or in a domestic situation, can easily lead to head injuries, including concussions. It's another reason why it's important to always try to resolve conflicts peacefully. Concussions can happen in any situation where a sudden movement causes the brain to move around in the skull. They aren't limited to the scenarios we've talked about. They can occur during everyday activities like playing with kids, working around the house, or even just walking your dog. It's important to remember that any high-impact activity can cause a concussion, so always take precautions. Whether it's wearing protective gear during sports, buckling up in the car, or being mindful of potential hazards around your home, every step you take towards safety can help prevent a concussion. Concussions are particularly prevalent among students, but why is that? As we dive into this topic, let's consider a few factors that make students more vulnerable to these injuries. Firstly, let's take a closer look at sports and physical education classes, both integral parts of many students' lives. Football, soccer, basketball and other contact sports are common culprits in concussion cases. With the adrenaline pumping and the competition heating up, students often overlook the importance of safety measures, leading to accidental head injuries. Physical education classes, while beneficial for overall health, can also pose a risk. Think about it. The gymnasium is a hotbed for potential accidents. Dodgeball games, jumping jacks and the occasional tumbling pyramid. These activities, although fun, can sometimes result in accidental bumps and falls. Next, let's not forget the general lack of caution that comes with youth. As students, the world is our oyster, and we often feel invincible. We push boundaries, take risks, and sometimes that can lead to injuries, including concussions. Moreover, the bustling school environment itself contributes to the risk. Crowded hallways, staircases and playgrounds are all places where accidents can happen. A trip over a misplaced backpack or a tumble down the stairs in a rush to class can result in an unexpected head injury. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Remember, knowledge is power. Understanding these risks can help you navigate your student life with more caution. It's all about balancing the excitement of youth with a healthy respect for safety. Regular helmet use during sports, maintaining order and discipline in physical education classes, and fostering a culture of safety in school can significantly reduce the risk of concussions. So, it's not just about being aware of the risks, but also about taking proactive measures to mitigate them. As you can see, being a student can put you at a higher risk of a concussion, but knowing this is half the battle. So let's keep learning, exploring and growing, but always remember to protect our most valuable asset, our brains. So, you've suffered a concussion, what should you do now? Let's delve into some effective strategies that can promote a healthy recovery from a concussion. The first and foremost, and perhaps the most significant, is rest. Rest is paramount for your brain to heal. It's not just about getting a good night's sleep, but also about taking breaks from activities that require a lot of mental effort. This could be anything from studying for an exam, reading a book, or even playing video games. Just like you would rest a sprained ankle, you need to give your brain the downtime it requires to recover. The second strategy is to avoid activities that could lead to another concussion. It might be tempting to jump right back into the soccer field or the basketball court, but remember, your brain is still healing. Engaging in activities that could result in another bump or blow to the head can delay your recovery, or worse, cause further damage. It might be hard to sit on the sidelines, but it's a small price to pay for your long-term health and wellness. Now, you may be wondering, when can I return to my daily activities? The answer is, gradually. Slowly reintroducing daily activities can help your brain adjust to its normal routine. Start with light activities, like short walks or simple household chores. Over time, as your symptoms improve, you can slowly add more complex tasks like schoolwork or more strenuous physical activity. But remember, 
always listen to your body. If your symptoms worsen with an activity, it's a sign that you need to take a step back and rest. In addition to these strategies, it's crucial to seek medical attention. A healthcare professional can provide you with personalized advice and monitor your recovery process. They can guide you on when it's safe to return to more demanding activities and provide additional support if needed. It's always better to be safe than sorry, so don't hesitate to reach out to a healthcare professional if you have any concerns. And finally, remember to be patient with yourself. Recovering from a concussion takes time, and everyone's healing process is different. It's okay to take it slow, it's okay to ask for help. What's most important is that you're giving your brain the time and care it needs to heal. In summary, rest, avoid activities that could cause another concussion, gradually return to daily activities, seek medical attention, and be patient with yourself. These are the key strategies to support a healthy recovery from a concussion. Remember, it's crucial to give your brain time to heal after a concussion. Your brain is an incredible organ, capable of extraordinary things. Treat it with the care and respect it deserves, and it will serve you well for years to come. So, we've covered a lot today about concussions. Indeed, we've journeyed through the complex world of concussions, unmasking its intricate details. We started at the beginning, defining what a concussion is. We learned that it's a type of traumatic brain injury, caused by a blow or jolt to the head that disrupts the normal function of the brain. From there, we delved into the signs and symptoms, which can vary greatly from person to person. Some may experience physical symptoms like headaches, dizziness, and sensitivity to light or sound. Others may notice cognitive or emotional changes, like difficulties with memory and concentration, or feeling more irritable or anxious than usual. We also discussed common causes of concussions, highlighting that they can happen in a variety of ways. From sports injuries and falls to car accidents, a concussion can occur anytime there's a forceful impact to the head. Then we zoomed in on students, a group particularly at risk due to their active involvement in sports and other physical activities. It's crucial to remember though, that concussions aren't limited to athletes. They can happen to anyone, in any place, at any time. Lastly, we explored recovery strategies. We emphasized the importance of rest and how it's vital to gradually return to normal activities under the supervision of a healthcare professional. We also touched on the role of a healthy diet and regular hydration in supporting recovery. To wrap it up, concussions are serious business. It's not just about knowing the facts, it's about understanding them, recognizing the signs and taking the appropriate steps if you suspect a concussion. It's about being proactive and taking care of your brain health. Remember, knowledge is power, stay safe out there and don't hesitate to seek help if you think you've suffered a concussion.